technique. And you guys, you, you girls actually know how it works in the site cleaning, but you out there, maybe not. So all these websites that we look at today, they were sent to us in advance and we did some crawling and we looked at them a little bit, but the format lives from our live impressions from the live audit. And the disclaimer here, this is not a professional SEO audit. We only have 10 minutes of time or maybe 15. We'll discuss a lot of things, but we will not find everything. And we may not be perfect because we don't have so much focus, you know, here in our little chat. And with that, um, yeah, I, I just want get started so we don't spend more time just explaining the concepts you can ask questions uh in the chat um oh <laughs> an interesting effect okay yeah here's the randomizer we click on to randomize. see which one we select yeah exactly and okay. we start with the english thai dictionary Okay. John Saitman. Is, yeah. English, English, that was the very last, last one in our list. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let me let me look for it to start. English yeah. Thai Dictionary. And and the question was, does it oh, have a yeah. question? Oh, wait. The question. There was a question. Yeah. That is always good to provide us a little bit of uh, context. Yeah. Yeah. Where some of them question? have. And so, unfortunately, we don't have a question for this one. And okay. so I okay. would just look at this, you know, from scratch, um, the okay. way it okay. is. I, I I disabled all my ad blockers, so... Oh, yeah. my, I see that it has a high domain DITOS risk already. Uh, you it. see that already, okay. Yeah, when, when I open, I op just open it with Lean Research Tools. Yeah. So right away, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, there's a high I, distribution, high share, 74% yeah. of, of yeah. links. And not a lot of really referring domains, only just a bit more than 300. So the majority of them are quite risky, which points out a, a future in building problem, I, I believe. Wait, uh, ladies, you know, you can share your screen as well. Yeah. If you share your screen and you want to show something from LRT or from other websites, just, you know, go ahead. But I agree with yeah. you. This doesn't look very nice. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I am going to start a little bit uh, um, uh, crawling the website, going through the different mm -hmm. um, um, areas, uh, pages of the website. But it is important to understand that because of the nature of this website, uh, targeted uh, to explain concepts between the, the Thai languages to English and vice versa, it does need like really superb type of content in order to be able to rank relatively well. And this is the type of, of website that we also tend to lose visibility because in many cases, Google will be already showing the, the answers right right there with the with the dictionary feature, feature right at, at the top of yeah. the source. Yeah, I agree. Oh, wow. Do you speak Thai? I don't. No, I don't. I, I, I went. I went to the, to the, actually to the English version just a bit. Uh -huh. It's yeah. I, I, yeah, it's it's interesting to see. This is the thing. Um, when I go to a few of the pages, if you go to, for example, to English to Thai or Thai to English to mm -hmm. the to the upper, maybe better Thai to English, <laughs> to see yeah. the, the the content in English. Yeah. If, you, yeah. if you go to the top navigation, right. And, and then you have links to every word, to, to, to every, every letter of the alphabet, sorry. And, yeah, and you click yeah. on any of it. Take a look. Uh, all these pages, they seem to be canonicalized to mm -hmm. the overall dictionary, at, at least from what I can see here. Actually, I'm seeing through link redirect trace that I see the uh -huh. rel plus right there. Uh, yeah, they seem to be that the different letters are not necessarily indexable so mm -hmm. yeah uh, uh, that is not good because at the end of the day these are pages that you could leverage um explaining all the words with n um word uh, or f word or a word or whatever of the alphabet um yeah. in english and and trying to target these queries on one hand and then on the other hand because it is not it is not indexable uh, google won't be as incentivized to crawl it uh, in the long mm -hmm. run so then uh, uh, at the same time you're you're challenging that your specific words that fall under that structure get um crawl in 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 the long run too 
Oh gosh. Let me, uh, <laughs> let me see a little bit more. And then I am seeing that every every word. So for example, I am in the word humiliate here. Sorry, mm -hmm. it was chosen mm -hmm. randomly. Uh, yeah. If you go to that word, it doesn't have any content. The page title literally says humiliate, right? I will try, <laughs> for example, to, to define a pattern here. Humiliate yeah. from Thai to English or in, in, in Thai, right? The same thing, the other way around. The meta description only say humiliate. So yeah. It's it's literally there's a lot of opportunity here to optimize much further the metadata even and yeah. then of course to explain every every concept much more than just a single entry and and not yeah. much in the pages I don't see much explain I I see yeah. nothing I see a huge list I'm I'm on page one thousand six hundred forty now yeah but <laughs> if, you, if you're clicking in in any of those concepts Christoph. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Try to see like the actual concept of a of a of a word. I yeah. I don't see anything explained. I mean, I it's, these are pages that I think that might have been generated at some point, but not necessarily feature like uh, updated with content. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no content at all. And I mm -hmm. think yeah. Um, typicality. I think you're spot on with uh with the assumption that. Google probably has this already. I mean, if I, if I Google for any of these words. Yeah, allow me to take a look um, to see if they are ranking for anything, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, will, it, will, it will take my attention. So yeah, yeah in, in Thailand, they have a little bit based on, on, on SEMrush here from what I'm seeing. And then in the US, even less. And then their, their, their search visibility, organic uh, rankings here since uh, quite a few months ago have been tanked since May, for example, they haven't been oh. necessarily growing. And, and you can see literally like ups and downs uh, up when core updates are happening. Thing is, interesting enough, take a look, they are actually ranked in position four for English to Thai, right? Oh, okay. And, uh, but with the homepage, this is the thing, they are, they are pretty much uh, attracting a lot of the, the, the rankings that they have with their homepage and then with, yeah, with the homepage and then another another uh, URL that is like Thai keyboard. But that's pretty much it. They're not attracting much with anything else. And yeah. I will say that is because of, of this, of what we have mentioned before, of this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I, I think also, yeah, I think also their main page um, is ranking so well because it has some some content on, on it, like, yeah. you know, versus the rest of other pages. And as a result, they have some site-wide links that coming through the whole website that are just kind of what we see, like, you know, links in a footer. They, they, they don't really have a footer here, but like, you know, they have those site-wide links, which is most probably um, pushing the, their main page. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then, on the other hand, uh, talking a little bit about uh, link popularity, right, and, and the link patterns, I think that, of course, what link research tool is identifying is quite spot on, because uh, taking a look at which are the websites that are actually linking to them, like the top linking website is one, it seems that or one of the top ones is a Swedish website that is a web directory that literally has nothing to do <laughs> with this. And then the second one is a Polish website that yeah. is also not necessarily very relevant. Rather, let me see. Yeah, rather, well, I, sadly, I don't know Polish. Let's see what it says. Yeah. But yeah, it's a sort of a forum type of website. So I can see that, yeah. So it's, it's spot on what we are seeing in Lean research tools that this lean popularity that they have is not necessarily the most spontaneous, natural one on earth, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. They have the majority of their backlink uh, profile. It, it's more or less uh, either user generated pages, or there might be some like useless Wikipedia pages. I don't know how exactly they secured those links because currently mm -hmm. it's very popular to just simply buy those links. But what I should say that if you really want to get a Wikipedia link, I don't think it's really a good link from a link building standpoint. Uh, and even from a, like you, I'd say from digital power, unless it's not your company page, because 
they they are not really considering by Google as as, as really links that are worth uh, having in your backlink profile. That's what I would say. Oh, so you would not recommend to to go after? Yeah, them. I mean, like random. If it's like you know a link that is really about you page, I mean, like your ah, company okay. page, mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. yeah, that, yeah, that okay. like you know that is also coming from um, a relevant Wikipedia version. I mean, like if yeah. you have a website in English, then you yeah. should have a page in English rather than in Spanish. That's yeah. also yeah. quite. Uh, a, common pattern when websites uh, like you know in kind of trying to find a sneaky way to get a page on wikipedia and they're connecting with some i don't know eastern european um editors on wikipedia and securing links in this local language but it's also very confusing if your website is entirely in english and you are getting a link from spanish italian or even polish uh, wikipedia i mean like about about your page yeah yeah i, I, would, I would like to to talk about i think a very important aspect here right and it's the viability of a website like this in in today's reality, right? Like the business model of this type of website, unfortunately, as a dictionary, right, is, is sort of dying because Google is already answering this type of questions right there in the search, right? So the yeah. way that I see that it can be kept as 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 relevant or, or to try to, to, to have a positive ROI is sort of go with the approach that uh, what reference, for example, have, have gone. Instead of being just a dictionary, they are pretty much a forum for clarifications of, on languages issues. And there are a lot of Q&As regarding the context of languages, of terms, uh, a lot of people looking for support for translators, etc. So we have become a real resource for in, in which the, the dictionary or the translation it's just a source of it, right? But it's much yeah. more, and it relies on a lot of user-generated ger content, and that is the, the reason how and why Google keeps them ranking, right? So I yeah. think that it is important that they take this into consideration that even if they start improving the, 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 the URL structure here, the web structure, the content, etc., they I mean, if, if they really want to consistently grow and make the most out of this, they need to invest a lot, especially on the approach to mm -hmm. how to grow in the future and, and, and rely much more on user generated content. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it's definitely the case. Since I'm not also a native speaker and what I'm really looking for when I'm trying to justify whether I should use this phrase or not, is yeah. that how it's going to be used in a sentence. So I'd love to understand the context rather yeah. than uh, translating this phrase yeah, in a particular absolutely. way. So for me, it's more or less about, yeah, there might be like, you know, allowing me to connect with some native speakers to ask directly, like giving me a chat or something like this might be also an option to moving further. Because for me, from a business perspective, I'm not entirely understand what's the business model in terms of monetization. Yeah, because yeah. we don't see ads either, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, right. But I specifically disabled my ad blockers. My whole pie hole is okay. disabled, so we would see everything pop okay, up let, here. Let me see. I don't have ad No, ad no, blocker. I don't see any ads. I don't have an ad blocker, Nothing and they right. don't have any ads. So yeah. I don't know, maybe they, 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 they are planning to do something. Maybe they sell some traffic. Might be an option. Yeah. Dark web. Dark, yeah. web. Dark web is calling. Yeah. yeah. And I will wow. say, if, if they actually invest in it, I will say, like, try to improve uh, not only the navigation, right, and, and what they show at the different category uh, yeah. pages here uh, and the content of the of uh, the website overall, but if they are able to rewrite those URLs to become relevant, uh, whether in English or in Thai language, language using Latin characters, that will be great yeah. because right now, as far as I can see, they are, they are showing IDs in the URL. Mm, yeah, 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 that's not yeah, good. But not descriptive yeah. at all, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, my my feeling is um, maybe you know when we look at the link profile, the Wikipedia links that we found here on the Thai language, they are super relevant and it's about the Thai language. So the link mm -hmm. to the Thai dictionary makes total sense from a Wikipedia page with mm -hmm. one hundred seventy three thousand backlinks. That that link alone is really gold from my perspective, uh, and I haven't seen any fishy Wikipedia links here. Now the problem 
with the site and, and the purpose of the site, I think, you know, this product was created by the adoption of some um, Lexitron. This may be a translation software from this company. Mm -hmm. I would seriously take down the whole dictionary thing. I would strip off the dictionary um, um, content because mm -hmm. it's here in Google is so much better. I type in a word, I get that translation in a second, but I also see that it's community verified. I can listen to it and I see even images of what it is to, to verify. So this original use case to translate one word in a dictionary was taken away. Uh, what we see is that from all these target pages that we found that have links, uh, 93 actually have active links. That means from, a, 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 what, thousands of pages or a site, colon, from thousands of pages, 10,000 pages, 10,400 pages, uh, only 93 actually have links. And those I would try to isolate, put together in a landing page, and then maybe, you know, we don't have the owner here, maybe advertise the software there. From my understanding, I'm not a specialist, but from my understanding, this does not add any additional value to, to Google, to, to, to users yeah. using Google. And because of that, the website, well, it still ranks because it's there. Maybe they are not des at man that many, but it doesn't look like they make money with this yeah. and uh, it even costs them money. And I, uh, I, will, de I will definitely will yeah. say to this about those yeah. because they they have quite a few fishy links. Yeah. I mean, it's non-trivial, yeah. the share of links yeah. that are fishy versus the real ones. Of course, <laughs> uh, I will say, yeah. I will say, to definitely leverage the really good ones because they have yeah. all the few that are really good ones that will be great to leverage. Uh, yeah. Most of the links are also going to the homepage at the top pages. Mm -hmm. So I will mm -hmm. say, yeah, leverage this as potentially if they don't want to continue or they see that the work on uh, investing on a dictionary is not worthy anymore because of a dying yeah. business model and, yeah. and not worthy enough to invest either. To As yeah. you mentioned, Christophe, I, I completely agree on leveraging these already best link pages on, on becoming landing pages for a further product or a better mm -hmm. product that they, they will want to sell, right? Yeah. And maybe this Thai keyboard is even useful. I have no idea if this, uh, if you need a virtual keyboard, but yeah. uh, you, you know what will be actually cool to to be able to see the the translator keyboard. So you see yeah. the the words in Thai in in Thai in Thai languages uh, uh, oh, in Thai yeah. language, and and then you see right there what you are pressing in 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 the Latin alphabet. Yes. Yeah, oh yeah, and like that, that, that's yeah. a cool one. Yeah. yeah. Something, something more fun than than this, yeah. But I think in that direction, and these pages here with the idea to eighty-two thousand something that take a thirty to sixty seconds to load here on my on my super fast connection. I don't think any user is really, you know, browsing through this very slow website. So that's uh, likely something that you could get, uh, you know. Yeah, rid I, of actually, I have to say, have you seen it in in mobile? Because. Uh, no. Well, it seems to be responsive, at least. Okay, okay. Oh, there's a good okay. thing. But take a look. When you go to mobile, take a look. Oh, okay. I see that the, the, the navigation actually works. Uh, in a, you know, it's a sort of a drop down when you click on menu. Uh -huh. So it actually Oh, works. yeah. Okay. Yeah. But okay. yeah, so there is to something. something positive. <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. No, I've seen a lot worse than that. And it's yeah. interesting how this website is actually uh, fast on the start page and these from my perspective, very, very easy, cacheable sub pages take so long to load. Uh, no, this one is first, of course, the example. Yeah, so maybe, you know, what would be very interesting now is to also see in addition to the website that we browse as as, as rookies, as non thai speakers, uh, and the link profile would be the analytics data is to see how people and if people uh, spend time on the site and how they traverse, how they navigate through the website. Yeah. Right? My rate. assumption is a high Time bound rate, page. probably. Yeah. yeah, probably. But uh, that will be my next step to look at after these very obvious things, you know, because some things like here, the globe spam and these uh, negative SEO patterns that might be collateral damage just from other attacks, mm -hmm. you can fix with a button here in Link Research Tools. That's not the issue. And then there's so much stuff left, um, 872 domains with active links, I would, 
you know, you see a lot of them are out of this about here already. I would just go through the remainder and see where are they linking from. These these Wikipedia pages, Reddit is, is featured in France and in, in, in Vietnam. Yeah, it's uh, like confusing so why they 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 get the Wikipedia from France. Yeah. Well, yeah. this is the thing. I, mean, I see that quite a few of these are from Blogspot type mm -hmm. of uh, blogs. Then yeah. Swedish websites, Thailand's Fakta dot se or yeah, <laughs> yeah. Anthracit dot se. Maybe the makers of this web of this website are actually Swedish and not necessarily Thais, but because I see a lot of Thailand forum dot se, right? Uh, ah, I see yeah. this is yeah. being linked. I'm seeing learning research tools here. Yeah. This is being linked from many uh websites uh like that that are have the the swedish ip and and the yeah. swedish cctld there are mm -hmm. forums that talk about thailand but of course i are targeted towards the 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 the, the, the people there the audience there yeah. not yeah. the yeah. thailand these people are english pe speaking people right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. good point good yeah. point yeah um yeah, and I think with this, you know, I don't see, because you mentioned uh, Swedish, uh, I don't see those typical uh, spam and, and, and scraper spam domains. There are, okay, the, here are some links from a casino domain, and here are mm -hmm. some links from a DA, but, you know, five links here and ten bad links there, they won't make or break the game. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, uh, we've sure. seen a lot worse there. That uh, It can be cleaned up, it should be cleaned up, and here you see we need, also mm -hmm. need to spam uh, um, a track. We also need to keep track of the the, the risk over time. So this site was uh, suggested here somewhere in May and it never ha got a chance to be discussed. So I'm happy that we finally went over this. Uh, yeah, but once you have that backlink profile, I think, you know, maybe depending on what the site owners want to do, I've seen a couple other English title dictionaries and, and softwares here in the SERPs. Maybe that is also a good website or domain to just sell. You know, this could be an interesting website to sell to someone else who takes this for the purpose of just reusing all the link equity from all these trusted domains going back to his own, you know, product. Maybe, you know, we, we just found that maybe this product is not um, um, up to date anymore, but someone else maybe has a product. So those two could go together. And, and this is, you know, what I would, you know, maybe... Yeah, but but you know what, Christoph, I think it's yeah. quite tricky to just, you know, you could easily screw up everything when you're purchasing domains and redirecting to your domain. Because what happens then, if you are not really matching, I mean, like in terms of yeah. like, you know, let's imagine, and actually, we are going to have this case, um, then we are going to have a travel website. Yeah. And so the guy, the owner of this travel website, he purchased uh, a domain that is uh, also from a travel website mm -hmm. niche, mm -hmm. yeah. but they are not matching in terms of their, their kind of, um, let's say like, their specific businesses. So he's a travel blogger and the website that he purchased that was a, an affiliate project of one of um, uh, like, you know, companies that are basically what you could do, you could resell tickets like Skyscanner. But there ah, was okay. um, a Spanish version and his website was English. And he simply yeah, yeah. redirected all the domains to his English main page. Oh, oh, oh. And that's like what oh. you need to dissolve then in the uh, yeah. research tools. So you need to be guys, like, when you are purchasing domain, they, yeah, they might look cool and they might have some cool links like Wikipedia as well. And yeah. everyone is observed really about Wikipedia links. And I don't <laughs> see any point in this. And then you are simply redirecting, but so you need to remember that your page should be quite the same as the page that you are redirecting otherwise it's not going to send link equity to you in the in, in in the right proportion i would say because the link that was initially you were redirecting from the a website that you purchased mm -hmm. is allocated in some content that's not really relevant to your page and google understands this yeah, yeah. then the problem is Exactly. And uh, what I want to add is, 
quite often than people forget to simply run link detox on this website. Yes. We have so many things just talking about my website, but now imagine you buy this website. Uh, if you do a simple link check, then you often see the best and the strongest links first because that's how link checkers work. They show you great links and that makes people happy. And because of that, it's okay if you only look at 10% of the data. So Malte Landwehr just made this comparison of different link databases and how the results are different. But we try to maximize the analyzed link data by combining all of that together. And when you look at the whole thing, here you, the, the green ones are the good ones that you see, the Wikipedia mm -hmm. links. But we see that 75% or so are actually super toxic, super high risk links that you need to be careful about before redirecting that to your own domain. So this Also, what you need to problem. play only for those green links. So what you yeah. need to do when you go to a website and say like, okay, I don't want to pay for those <laughs> red ones. Exclude oh. them. Only oh. green ones, please. Oh, that is a great negotiation tactic. You know I what? Think you want it's 100... really worth it. If you do like, uh -huh. if you buy like domains on the skin, you need LRT too the LRT mm -hmm. tool because you could just really get a significant discount by just uh -huh. saying like, okay, you see, it's <laughs> like in reality, your backlink profile is nothing. You have like uh -huh. over 60, 70% oh. of useless links. Oh, here's here the link builder and you coming in <laughs> and negotiating <laughs> the best price then, right? Oh, that's fantastic, yeah. Yeah, that's a great idea. Absolutely. So we've just found a new a new user case of your tool. Exactly. Yeah. No, I love it. I totally love it. Yeah. And with that, I think we spent 30 minutes on this one already. Hi, Joanna. Nice to have you here. And uh, do we have some questions here? Guys, keep in mind, you have awesome experts here. They are waiting for your questions. They can give you advice. This is consulting or learning, teaching you on your questions. If you have these questions answered right now, this is your benefit. We're here for you. And so, yeah, keep them coming. If you Christoph, have I have the very first question just yeah. to warm up oh, yeah, yeah. everyone. Oh. So, Aleida, how could I get this amazing Mac that you have kept in, in your hand with the, the LT you know, logo? I'm trying to show off for Christoph to say <laughs> something, but he yeah, I want to get so one. So, how oh. about an AP eligible? Oh, fantastic. Well, oh, we need to send you one, Alex. Yeah, I don't have it. Only Actually, <laughs> now, now, now you remind me, I think we should send every guest one. Oh, that or will be very nice cool. I, I'll do make a, a nice photo. No, you will get one. You will get one for sure, Alex. Cool. Yeah, we'll set it up. <laughs> Thank awesome. You. Thank you. Thank you, Alida, for showing this off. I, I, I didn't no, notice. No, no, it's, it's one of my favorite mugs, and I always use it. So really appreciate yeah, it's, it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a quite big one. I love big mugs as well. Yeah. And now that all the trade shows are canceled, we have quite a lot in stock still. So no problem. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so let's look at the next website. As yeah. I said, we only have so much time and it's always fun to dig deeper into... Okay, so let's here's... Let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, go, go. Seattle, Seattle Facial. Oh, right? Seattle Facial. That's a good Wait. one. Which one? Seattle? Uh, it, it's, it's about plastic surgery. I oh, remember this one. Okay. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, Somehow so, it looks familiar to me. Does it say something in, in, in the comments that they sent? Uh, yeah, oh, yeah. They were, yeah, they they had a comment. Let there me was find a it. Comment. A Seattle facial set. Yeah. Determining the, if the percentage of no follow links from real self is hurting or helping. I don't think um, it's an issue actually. I mean, like it, it, it's just you you have some no follow links and yeah. that's okay. I mean, if you have like you know even like fifty percent of no follow links and. This actually happening in their case um, due to one simple fact of how they are acquiring links because they have a lot of links that are coming from user-generated content because mm -hmm. they are answering questions on some uh, websites like similar to Quora or Reddit but about uh, plastic surgery when yeah. just you have like and I don't know I wanna I wanna do something with my face could you recommend something or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, and so they, they, they are just answering questions there regularly, yeah. which is actually a great strategy, I think, because yeah, um, it, it, it's one of ways of uh, like, you know, building your brand 
And so those also on those websites, um, uh, users are voting for the best answer. And so they're like, you know, I, I look through their few of their answers and they're high voted, which is quite mm -hmm. cool. And that's a really, really nice digital PR strategy, actually, because I, you're building your brand awareness. I have, to, I have to say that I completely agree. I mean, having very high no follow, uh, a very high share of no follow links, it's not that it's going to hurt you, right? Because no. it, it, it depends also on the context of, the, of those links. Yeah, Why sure. are they no follow? If they are no follow because of the tactics that you're using uh, and, and uh, yeah, leveraging user generated content, comments, actual and legitimate interaction with the community then it's yeah. okay what i have to say though because i am sh i am seeing that indeed the, the share of no follow is very very high um if you do want to make sure that the tactics or the actions that you're taking only building really really pay off you better st start maximizing those actions that will drive follow links that you know that yeah, will yeah, yeah. A, a bigger role right to, to yeah. make it much more wor worthwhile yeah, yeah there, there, there is nothing bad with no follow links, but you need to remember that they are not sending link equity. So they are not helping you to rank higher if you like, you know, doing it on purpose. I have to add to this that this actually changed about a year ago. In September mm -hmm. 2019, Google announced Achille. that they will introduce new rules and they, uh, I called it no follow 2.0. Mm -hmm. no I don't believe in this. Um, they, they I, might, mean, I don't they see might it. Decide to choose it or not. They might decide to take it into consideration or not. So it's up to them. Yeah, because, my, because I don't yeah. see any changes actually in my case for my clients. If it's no follow, it's just no follow. Yeah. Um, from my perspective, that has been the case for for always i mean at least uh, for five six years we know that no follow links can also cause a penalty because mm. it's not about follow or no follow or their specific keyword but they try to identify spamming intention mm. so there were mm -hmm. a couple of cases where there were thousands of, of links from uh, a press release directories for example mm -hmm. you know from pr newswire and, and the mm. like PR web and, and, so on. Mm -hmm. and they they gave uh, Google gave examples, spam examples that were mm. no follow at mm. the time it was uh, beginning of 2014, and we made a case study and polls. And actually, in our software, we then introduced uh, two different ways to analyze the data to calculate mm -hmm. the risk, either with or without the no follows. And I think uh, personally, I think that no follows can help. For instance, uh, the Wikipedia links that we saw that are very relevant and have lots of uh, uh, equity, lots of trust there. Mm -hmm. Those are the no follow links that have a positive effect. And then if you have thousands of, of no follow links, the question to me is, and, and we try to think like an algorithm, why are they there? And if they mm -hmm. come from a forum here and they are answering questions and there are actual users going from here to there. So if you have the traffic, if you if you imagine that the story behind the link, why is the link there is, is legit, makes sense. Mm -hmm. If you tell it mm -hmm. to John Miller at a conference, look at all my links here. And he says, makes sense if users go there, then these links are okay. Uh, so I I. I would say that right now we can still not be sure that no follow links work or do not work. But I also I agree with you, Alex. Uh, most of the no follow links are still useless and ignored, right? So it's a. Uh, I think what Google just did is they confirmed that there can be exceptions that they may count it or maybe not, and so. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, like, what what really bothers me with no follow links that currently, especially within a B two B niche, a lot of websites what they are trying to do they're giving, for instance, uh, a do follow attribute to one or two links without within their content uh, yeah. on one page, and then to the rest of other links they are sending to Google um, no follow attribute, and this kind of rings a bell for me because mm -hmm. if a website is a good website and it's worth mentioning it and then you're getting a follow from this content yeah. Yeah. while the yeah. rest of other websites are quite the same yeah 
Yeah. But in that right. case, I try to delete this link and ask to delete this link because I don't see a reason to, like, you know, that's kind of a human factor when they don't want to kind of send things just, which is wrong, actually. Yeah. Because they don't understand the whole logic of search engines because we need to link to, to other websites to send traffic to just, you know, to kind of allow traffic to go through one website to another one and then the whole point of everything. Yeah. And when you're blocking it and it, you're just not understanding how the search engines works. Yeah, Yeah. I, I will say, I mean, I don't think that no, the no follow part is the worrying side of yeah. things here, but yeah. actually I don't know if you're seeing the, the high domain detox, detox risk actually <laughs> that this domain has. And pretty much when going through when take a look at this particular links, uh, there's a high share of them that are showing a, an available status. And that's pretty much because these were very spammy looking directory mm -hmm. that at some point existed, even in user type of profiles uh, yeah. that were sending the links towards them. And of course, these were no follow because the typical user profile. So I will say that maybe the work that they need to do instead of, well, um, uh, necessarily worrying about the no follow is yeah. about what change of strategy they, they can they can make uh in the early building um process to attract more links that are actually they that they make sure that actually play a role and 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 send popularity actual popularity from really good websites because from yeah. what i can see they suffer from not necessarily a lot of only about uh, 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 of a lot of no follow links, but also links that have been uh, uh, disabled or really eliminated, mm -hmm. and uh, now pages are showing un an unavailable status, right? Yeah. And the, yeah. Yeah, the, I think that the main problem of literally any local business that acquiring links from, let's say, like kind of well, first of all, relevant sites, and that uh, links should be allocated within decent content. So you need to just, you know, find a way whether you're going to, I don't know, guest blog or you're going to do some relationship based in building, trying to connect with some people and. Hmm? 100%. I mean, this sector is full of influencers in, yeah. in, uh, in social, right? Of, yeah. of people who can endorse or write about their experience. Also the before and after a lot of informational queries about how does this procedure works? Uh, do I need to stay at home after my <laughs> read of plus D or something like this? So a lot of informational queries that they can use to target what how to's, FAQs, to establish their authority in the market. And they can then promote quite easily because this is the type of sector. I mean, if they were in all the boring sectors, the, 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 it, it will be much harder to find people yeah. that will be willing to link to this information. But this, I mean, tons of, of people and, and communities out there willing to share good information about how does it take to do like to, to go through a plastic yeah. surgery effect etc and also they are an actual clinic it's not that they are an yeah. aggregator they have yeah. a proper proper medical uh, resources internally to be able yeah. to write about this in a in an authoritative way right yeah. yeah, I think like, you know, the biggest benefit of this clinic that they really have a quite uh, well known, well established brand of their main doctor who is the founder of this website. He's yeah. quite well known guy. So he, he just he, he, he does some lectures and what he he just needs to be like, you know, to write somewhere and to produce content. And basically in their case, I think even like from 10 to 20 links will change a thing, really change a thing from authoritative, relevant websites. Mm -hmm. And yeah. actually yeah, you, you see, they do have a, a little bit of ready of content over there, but I, the problem is that they are not leveraging this before and after in a yeah. way that is the best to, to attract links to, to rank for anything like rhinoplasty before and after or whatever, because yeah. The, yeah. The, the website structure is not necessarily the best, the, the, the content, the information is not formatted or optimized to be rankable in, in any case. So yeah, they do have a lot of opportunity. Oh, oh my God, I'm, I am shocked on that before and after. <laughs> that is a, a life changing. <laughs> that is, I mean, I will totally, if I see this picture, I, I will be the first one. Two to different read. people. <laughs> <laughs> right, right there. Yeah, they have but done there's... amazing work. I mean, There's so much work, examples, uh, real real testimonials, as it seems, uh, that could be leveraged. But, you know, when I look at this menu here, this looks like 1995. And um, 
the uh, I think what they need is is just a proper creative department. I would say, you know, content, look at all these testimonials marketing. here. Content, content, content marketing, marketing. Yeah. yeah, content marketing totally. to structure this and to present it. It's just what they need. They simply need to analyze what kind of URLs are currently ranking well and yeah. just just you know kind of. I, I hate saying copy, but in some way to use this pattern, I would say yeah. it's not about copying, but analyzing and taking the best. Yeah, and, the and I have to say links. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. And I have to say something before I forget. Something that you um, highlighted, Alex, that I think is particularly important to leverage in this particular case. If the doctor here or the team of doctors are actually quite quite, uh, quite well known, they could easily start attracting link links uh, that are quite authoritative from uh, by by doing guest posts uh, or, or yeah, yeah, actually yeah, right. like highly authoritative complex type in, in magazines that talk about these procedures for example which and, and of course it needs to in, to include it's not about doing cheaply building right but actually including your profile as an author that and and to connect with your with your knowledge graph to show that you're connected at the end of the day with this other yeah, is, highly yeah, authoritative yeah. publication, you can easily do webinars with Q and A's like this, and pretty much a lot of people in the community will link to you. You yeah. could uh, potentially start speaking more at conferences in your fields and ask a link back whenever, or to give interviews, etc. So when you have an, an authoritative figure in your industry in your sector, it should be very straightforward to get mentions like this. Absolutely. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. and uh, what I what I see here is uh, there's a lot of gold hidden in 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 this website that just needs to be surfaced. And, and the second thing that I noticed now, when we got rid of you know the very obvious link spam and, and you know scrapers mm -hmm. and that, there are two thousand links from a private blog networks. Um, oh, that that, that that's not really good. Yeah, and when you look at some of them, you know here. Sporting Club Messina, uh, a WordPress, oh. a WordPress blog, with articles like this. You know, admin oh. on September nine. Wait, that was huh, that's not even long ago. So here is some some what admin writing about SEO training course, and then somewhere there is a blog post about plastic surgery. And I'm sorry, you know, the grillaholics and the grill mats here next to to mm -hmm. Dr. Williams, uh, Dr. No, Dr. Portu Portuguese. Um, that stuff needs to go. And I see 2000 links here that probably help them to some extent. So there are some, you know, when we look at a link profile for those, there's majority is follow. When we look mm -hmm. at the risk, there are still two thirds, of maybe even almost 80% with below average risk that could be worth it. But there are some high risk links. And here on the high risk link side, they are probably among other link buyers and other spammers, as Google calls them. You know, SEOs are spammers. Uh, so these links. Uh, 55, maybe already got them a penalty, uh, either, either, you know, algorithmic or maybe even a manual action. We don't know. Yeah. I haven't, I don't have information about that, but that's totally possible with the money keywords here, rhinoplasty and, uh, plastic surgery, Seattle, VA, you know, just look at, when we look at this share, the 2000 links and the anchor text for that, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Plastic surgeon Seattle. No, that's not Plastic. a really good one. It, it's just very straightforward. Yeah. Money very keyword. Commercial. Yeah. Very commercial. Very commercial. Very obvious uh, um, a link building. You're not going to do this organically. Like, I can't imagine, like, and then I want to talk about plastic surgeon in Seattle, a boom link. It's, <laughs> See, it's, that's a, it's a very exciting topic. <laughs> it's not plastic surgeon in Seattle. It's plastic surgeon in Seattle. So it's, yeah. even, it's not even natural language. So yeah. all of these are a problem. Yeah. But this is the thing, right? And it's very straightforward and very obvious here. And, and the thing is, like, when someone asks me, it's like, how will you actually refer to someone offering that service or product, right? Is that yeah. the real way that you will you will describe it, right? Like it's, it's indeed it's not even natural looking, or nobody no, will no, talk no. like that. It's, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's just it's a, such an easy uh, pattern that Google could uncover within just a few seconds. That the reason why people don't do that is very risky. So something hey, something that. important that we need to mention, right? Too is yeah. like yeah. If, if if your link profile is rather natural. 
in most cases, most of the, your links will come with your brand name. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, in no, a very no natural... anchor. Oh, na no anchor as well. Oh, like no here, anchor too? Yeah, here or there. click here. Or click yeah, here. Yeah. So if you actually want to replicate uh, or to have uh, a, a natural uh, link profile, it won't be over optimized like this, of, of course. Yeah. <laughs> The most popular link is plastic surgeon Seattle. The next one is plastic surgery Seattle. Um, <laughs> Seattle facial is uh, here uh, at, at the fifth position. So, and Dr. William Portuis, that is the brand as well, just like dub 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 Seattle facial. Um, they should be the biggest ones in here. Yeah, when we look at the like... keywords by risk, it's all red. Look at this. Yeah. Here is a cosmetic search in Seattle that is green, but everything else here is super risky that I would, um, you know, I, I would do bulk cleanup, then maybe uh, uh, a lot of people don't know that you can clean up with a disavow and then undisavow single links. You know, if you have mm. a penalty, if you, you can, you know, wipe it out and then start reapplying those links mm. and that works, mm. undisavowing works and increases your rankings then you will notice fairly quick if you use link detox boost when the link is being crawled after a couple of hours or maximum a day or two you will notice mm -hmm. if that link helped or hurt you mm. and mm -hmm. this is what you could do here um yeah and another important point i yeah. think that i am i am checking a little bit more the link profile here mm -hmm. and, and how mm -hmm. does it match with their top ranked pages and for which queries they're actually ranking i'm actually quite yeah. surprised that they are already ranking position third for flat nose uh, mm -hmm. with that landing page. So, I mean, I, they do have a URL structure that reflect the way that people search. Uh, they, they are ranking ch for cheek implants and position Yeah, that, that's the one that they need to update a little bit, actually. Mm -hmm. And, and mm -hmm. downturned nose. However, what I am seeing is that there are some terms for which they are not ranking yet in the top 10 or top 5 positions, like rhinoplasty. Mm -hmm. Why? Because even if they do have a, a procedures page specifically for it, which is great, yeah. And which, of course, it can be updated, the content ex uh, optimized for etc. The problem is like that I am seeing that most the, the page that is attracting more links about rhinoplasty is the rhinoplasty photos page, mm. not mm -hmm. the rhinoplasty procedure. So you need to think about how you can leverage the photo page that, of course, everybody wants to share photos and links to their photos, not necessarily. Yeah. So if you have them separated or at an independent page, you need to think if, if it is better for you to in integrate that specific URL into your procedures for rhinoplasty for that for that type of procedure to leverage in a single category page all of the links uh, because people is, is is the one that people share and that the one that you actually want to rank to. So yeah. I will think of how even if you cannot do that or this doesn't make sense because you want to, to uh, for example, place the photos um, specifically in this different type of page or whatever. Think about better cross linking uh, between yeah. them, for example. So better ways to to leverage this because I can see that it's not that they don't. They don't attract. They are not attracting links for this type of topics, right? They are, mm -hmm. but the links are going to the photo pages, not to the actual category or procedure pages, how they are mm -hmm. called. There. Yeah. Plus, uh, there is uh, a couple pages that I checked now. There is a couple uh, links always to the home page for words like you know Dr. Williams' names here, mm -hmm. but also for for a word called doctors. Mm -hmm. So there mm -hmm. seems to be some, let's say, basic internal linking optimization, mm -hmm. internal linking plugin, maybe an automation here, Department of Plastic Surgery and Plastic Surgery links back to, yeah, page. a nice photo. Mm. Mm -hmm. No. And here, mm -hmm. Dr. William is being linked to the start page again. I mean, if mm -hmm. I'm on the start page and I want to learn about Dr. William, I, I, I don't expect to just go to the same URL, right? A renal plastic mm. cosmetic surgery? Yes. Here we got a deep link to that specific, well, list of before and afters. And I think you could do a lot more. And actually what I'm going to do is I want to... You could uh, do a lot more with your face, basically. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Based yeah. on this list of photos. Here's something that I think could make sense. You know, we haven't enabled the internal link feature of link research tools because, you know, most people think about site audits and link audits for, for external links. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to rerun the whole thing here, maybe for next time, where we can look at the site structure 
and the internal links for this one because that one is interesting we have a lot of content and we have a lot of links and we have rankings but so, um yeah, yeah. So, something else that i have just noticed i i validated uh the home page mm -hmm. uh with the mobile friendly tests from google and page speed insights right yeah. on one hand uh, it does pass the mobile friendly test however and in the screenshot of the render page, you can see that there's a pop-up right there. Oh, uh, being yeah, shown, this one here. Yeah, that one. Being shown is like at least delay it a bit, please. Because otherwise, the, the crawler would it, say it. it, it you, you pretty much potentially being negatively affected because it's intrusive. There is a pop-up um, ranking factor that was uh, released for mobile devices three years, four years ago, even something mm -hmm. like that. So it's important that you don't you don't have this overlays uh, of the full screen or, or pop-ups covering the full screen right away when the user, the, the crawler will, will see it. Uh, mm -hmm challenging to see the actual content of of, uh, of the page that is something very important then on the other hand from a uh, speed perspective right largest content for pain 11 seconds um anything over over three and a half four mm -hmm. is already seen as bad i see that there, one of the things that are impacting more is the usage of images of course this is a website that is image heavy but many of the images are not necessarily compressed or or sized in the in the yeah. right in the right si si uh, si uh, side that mm -hmm. the, the the height that they will be um shown to the user then uh, render blocking resources that you can potentially preload or or load in an async way to avoid yeah. uh, blocking the 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 rendering of of the pages so yes the doc Quite a few things to do i uh, i believe that not necessarily are is actually like that difficult that you could even uh, if you are using uh wordpress for example you could Im implement with plugins for example so so yes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. by the way uh, just I, i've just come up with a an inbuilding maybe opportunity for them that might, they might take advantage of because the, what they could do they could try to kind of exchange their knowledge versus links. So for instance, uh, there might be some uh, website that are writing about uh, surgery, but they are more about like informational one and they might like, you know, do kind of, um, I might, might be kind of like a re revision of their posts. And in that way, they are going to add some kind of professional comments there or might be just reviewing like a professional editor from from like you know from a medical standpoint and by these getting links uh, just in exchanging their knowledge in that way because i know that a lot of websites that are writing about like kind of very let's say like blogs that are writing about very complex topics, they're always lacking of uh, such experts that could uh, review their content in terms of matching the reality. Yeah, yeah. Oh, by the way, we got some questions here. Here's Andy. Oh. Uh, we talked about, wait, no one has ever proven where page rank from no follow goes if they are dangling nodes. Changing all my no follow links to encrypted JavaScript back in 2009 had no perceived benefit. Yeah, um, I think this was in relation to the optimization of trying to not have no follow links. But I think oh. what you, Alex, meant is that you should just have follow links all the way, you know, on everything. And not yeah, I mean, like, it's, it's bad. I mean, like, it depends for sure. You, you can't control everything. But for instance, let's yeah. imagine you, you are getting a follow link. Uh, and so you you might be like doing it on purpose i mean like you your, your attempt was to get a follow link and in that case it might it might make sense just to say like i don't need that link at all yeah it, it depends yeah. i mean like it depends on the context of getting this link one more time indeed but i mean if, if that link didn't require any effort and was spontaneous and you didn't actually need to yeah you just it, can leave okay. it but is it, if it is something that you, you're actually working for and putting effort on, you, you better try to make it follow. To, to yeah, or just yeah. say, like, you know, remove it. 
because yeah. if you have a content that like you know let, let's say for instance you have a blog post with a few uh, similar websites to yours and they are all getting a uh, do follow link and you're the only one who are getting no follow link that might look suspicious why you're getting this no follow link yeah yeah then exactly. the question is because like you know well a, a generic way of adding a no follow tech is just because you don't trust to this website and then the next question is why this website don't trust you and trust to the rest of other similar websites you have something bad <laughs> yeah exactly yeah yeah i think you know uh, there's no point in proving if you you know should optimize without no follows um i would recommend to not waste your time at all if you're lacking content if you have so much content that just needs better representation or better technology just you know faster faster loading websites or better compressed images or simply you know all of this content spun off into separate stories you know what's his name and and what were his feelings when he did that in 2014 how much did it cost i i, I was googling you know how much does rhinoplasty cost and, and this website didn't come up because it doesn't have any faq schema here at all and even one broken it, it's starting on their main page they have it starting from 10k usd if you want to change something on your face <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. But here is even a pricing page where they go into much more detail, where it says Rhinoplasty regular costs seven eight fifty plus six hundred forty three for the anesthesia. That's what I was talking about. You you could round it. <laughs> yeah, here's the ten thousand one, and uh, you know. All these different pages with the stories uh, could just get uh, more interesting if you know exactly how much he paid for it, and. I would even advertise that you get a discount if you, well, maybe not. <laughs> but I think like, you know, Christoph, it's good to mention here that this content is kind of sensitive in terms of uh, like you can't personalize it because normally people don't want to um, be associated with this. And I'm not pretty sure whether like at some point people don't really allow to use their photos. So that's the mm -hmm. second question here. Yeah. So, um, because I know like even in Russia, if you just, you know, went through a plastic surgery, normally you put some kind of confidential agreement saying like, you, you can't use my photos unless, I don't know, you give me a kind of a discount or something like that. Yeah, I'm, so, I'm sure he gave them a discount, you know, if it's 10,000 on the website and you can <laughs> just pay 5,000. Okay. Uh, that's, yeah, that's some money. I mean, just making yeah. this up. I have no idea. I have no experience with plastic surgery, as you can see. Yeah, <laughs> no, I, I, no, I mean, uh, it definitely, you need to incentivize people in, in some way, right? To, to give yeah. testimonials, review, yeah. um, to to allow them to use your image yeah, for yeah. marketing purposes. It makes sense. I mean, yeah, yeah, it's not so easy, I guess, in in, in a kind of yeah. persuading them to to leave a story as well. Uh, here's Craig Mullins and a couple other already asked this, how they can get their website audited. And the way it works is that you just sign up for the next free uh, LRT site clinic. And once you've done that, you not only sign up for the site clinic, but we will also send you a follow-up email with a link to a form where you can fill that out. And then you need to confirm, you know, that it is okay that we show your site. You need to confirm if you want to give us your Google Search Console data or not, etc., etc. So all of that happens after site signing up for the site clinic, yeah? And uh, yeah, this is uh, how it works. So I just wanted to mention that here for you, Craig, and, and the others that asked before. Um, it's fairly straightforward. Oh yeah, Craig asked again, do we need to sign up for LRT to be able to submit a URL? Well, it would be great if you would buy the product too, the software for yourself. Absolutely, yes. <laughs> yeah, which, you know, Craig, actually, uh, uh, maybe I need to mention that as well. If you have your own account, then we could set all of this up in your account. So to say as a starting, as a, as a kickoff for your account, do the audit in your account, and then you keep the data and all, you know, continue working with that because as you see this is not a one-time job and not something that you you know do once um, this is a um, this website has been around for many years and uh, the, the work never ends and i think ladies you will agree you know how, how long have you been in seo yeah seven. i think it's yeah 2007 yeah. Yeah. yeah no around 10 like yeah eight maybe eight, yeah yeah, yeah eight. like really Sometimes long that. Yeah, like really long. long, yeah. And yeah. so that's. Uh, I, I might need a plastic surgery 
<laughs> after some time as well, just being being so, so so much into it, so you know it might hurt. You, you need for yeah. the wrinkles. <laughs> yeah, you need like uh, you need for everything, literally. Yeah. It's so like finally, when, when your client is asking a, a question like, when my ACL starts working finally, you're like, <laughs> when I can see the results. Yeah, when I can see the results. Tomorrow, maybe, maybe yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ladies. Shall we do one more side? Let's do you go. have time yeah, for yeah, one more? Yeah. Let's go for another one. So here's uh, Dra Dra Drago Eshko, Alin with Criare site web .com. Which is which is which one? Ah, okay. Uh, a Great Romanian side. site. Okay. Uh, what the name of uh, the guy that was? I'm trying to find it. What is? Let me. Criare site web. Creati. The Romanian ah, side. Okay. And, ah, okay, okay, okay. Gotcha, gotcha. Digital Creati. marketing. Creati. My yeah. fa my favorite. <laughs> uh, okay gotcha okay let me open it yeah i just clicked on auto translate so this all of this was romanish before Rom Rom romanian 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 yeah romanian, romanian yeah. before but i don't speak so uh, we, we have this here in english yeah I, I guess they, they're selling some digital marketing services uh, in particular creating websites and yeah, uh, SEO as well. Design, web design, isn't it? Yeah, web design as well as uh, uh, optimiza SEO optimization. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So here is a portfolio page about let's some. See. Do they have a question? Oh, yeah, let's let's Let check. No, I don't yeah. think so. They don't have a question. They sorry. don't have anything, isn't it? Okay. Yeah. What, what what I'm really missing here uh, that who is the owner of this website because I was trying to desperately find like you know uh, like you know something like a team or something like that because normally when we you are within a B two B niche uh, you need to show the real face otherwise uh, like you know showing it's that hard. you're yeah that you're an actual brand that you yeah, know yeah. your stuff that you have uh, uh, yeah authority in that field because it's something that is yeah is is supposed to be complex is. Indeed. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and, I have uh, a Google Plus page, but it's offline. So that doesn't <laughs> count, right? So uh, this is interesting, right? I am seeing their, their, the evolution of the ranking for Romanian um, keywords. Uh, and, and yes, in 2019, they actually didn't, they, they didn't grow at all. It was pretty much flat. They, was, they, they were affected by the core update that happened at the start of the year. But um, on the flip side, in the one from May, they they started to grow again, right? So mm -hmm. they, they have been like going back and forth. But the thing is, this clearly happened, and I will now analyze further, when you have inconsistencies and, and, and content issues and going on, on on your website, because then you are all, let's say, in risk. To be yeah. to be negatively affected in the next goal update because there is obviously something missing or a lack of con of consistency in your content to be perceived all the time relevant and authoritative to be ranking at a consistent basis, right? Yeah, copyright twenty sixteen. I'm sorry, I'm out. You know, I wouldn't I wouldn't even contact them. I mean, if yeah. You promote... Also, they're using stock images, which is uh, which is not good at all, especially in B two B. Well, like you shouldn't do that. It, it's like you know, giving a like you know a bad signal not even to Google but to your potential clients as well, because it's all like you know, giving you a low trust level. So you mean they paid money for this photo of the of the Mac keyboard? With no, they. I think that that is just a stock image. I mean, like they just find something in Google. Ah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. I would change this image. It looks. It's. Dirty. They 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 have more like you know weight ones on their main page when you scroll okay. down till the ah, very okay. end. Ah, the, okay. Yeah, yeah. If you go like you know, yeah. Well, these okay. are okay. Uh, yeah, all all, all ah. of those. Oh, it some looks of much them better. are okay. Yeah, uh, this one. Some of <laughs> so them. So why are have okay. the ugly one on top? That's yeah. yeah. No, I would get rid of that one. Even at least put this one there. But uh, yeah, yeah you, 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 you just you know you could create your own image in Canva just within a few seconds. What yeah. was the point of using those random, yeah. like you know, laptops? 
that that's your laptop or what <laughs> what are you trying to point out by by using yeah. this image yeah it unfortunately it does seem like very generic right that yeah. not, yeah. not an actual business necessarily there you need to show a photo of you of your team if you do have a team to give uh, trust to 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 uh, yeah communicate trust to your customers on one hand um then on the other hand for, at least from a lean popularity perspective i i from as far as i can see in link research tools they have uh, only some few links that are not necessarily uh, that good but in general they they the profile in general is not as toxic as the ones that we had seen before in fact exactly, i will say yeah. they don't seem to have been doing much link building in general because most mm -hmm. of the links seems to go to the home page the anchor text what we were discussing ab about most of the anchor texts are are whether empty or not optimized or or for keywords like visit the block right yeah. and i am yeah. translating yeah. In, in, in romanian right so it does seem that well for good or for bad like they don't they don't have done much actual in building so this gives you a room of growing and and improving on on a way that is relevant and leveraging for example if you're a web design company to show off your work showing amazing designs or design concepts or mm -hmm. opportunities to show that you're an actual amazing web designer uh, or web developer right so i think that again this is a sector that if you do share an amazing guide of how to design from scratch this type of website or so on or or a new technique on web design uh, it, it gives you a lot of room on uh, 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 to attract lots of natural links because this is a sector that is very active online and w for which there is a, there are many communities online in forums in social media in social networks whatever so you will be able to get or attract a lot of links by relationship building by by becoming an influencer in your sector right so there's tons of room to grow but definitely needs to change the approach here yeah. yeah yeah i think like you know when it comes <laughs> to link building um it, it's it's much easier definitely to build links uh for b2b businesses especially for digital marketing <laughs> because literally each and every marketer uh, in your niche um she or he understand the value of links but uh, on another hand it's very competitive so you need to just you know to produce something decent in order to just you know persuade people uh, to link back to your content and so that's not so easy um but what i think like you know i always recommend as a starting point if you are not really experienced with link building start from like you know some low hanging opportunities like check your current circles you will be amazed how many websites that you you've already connected with they're also uh, looking for link building opportunities they have like you know blocks where you could write a guest post or like you know you could communicate with them much 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 easier um getting a link because they know you they trust you versus going through a cold email outreach a traditional one because it's first of all it, it's not so easy it's easier said than done to do it it takes a lot of time and so you might be disappointed with the results because it's quite hard to just you know to leverage the power of hmm? something important also to to assess here i i crawl the website and i'm going through what i'm seeing for example how they are optimizing the titles right and it's their approach mm -hmm. and focus on certain terms right like the the website is rather generic uh, about creating websites right but in the title of the homepage, they are optimizing for creative web, side web, WordPress, mm -hmm. mm. that they are focusing themselves at least in, in which is in not their clear. Like, like is not if clear. Their, their main their main uh, platform to to develop to develop mm. uh, the the uh -huh. the website is WordPress. So if you do really want to 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 establish yourself as a web design or web development company for WordPress websites, you better well clear that up <laughs> rather yeah. much more on on your website on one hand or if it is just another of your many offerings then it might be worth it to create a specific landing page for it and not yeah. trying to optimize your home page for it because it doesn't it wouldn't make much much sense right and then let let me see the the title tag uh meta description also it seems that 
oh, now, perfect. I, I just translated to English because I wasn't really sure. It mentions something like website creation company for any type of online business, online store, travel agencies, real estate, so, uh, create cheap WordPress website. So this is the thing. Again, it seems that they want to highlight the WordPress and then targeting to certain industries. If mm -hmm. you're really interested to get clients from this particular in, uh, uh, industry, you better instead of trying to, again, optimize your homepage or, or, uh, for this altogether to create specific category pages or landing pages or product pages showing your work and your expertise in each one of these industries and why you are or you should be the number one provider of web design in them and what you have done in the past uh, to show testimonials of happy clients, how you, these websites look right now, how they are well optimized and have a, provide the best uh, user experience to and the best speed, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I, I will say that it's better to have this much more better organized approach and structural approach on the way that you want to, to target and the, the terms that you want to run for rather than trying to cramp everything on the, on the homepage, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Your main page is just for your main selling point. So what's the difference of your, I don't know, how do you position your company rather than putting literally everything on your main page? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and um, I'm not sure if host professional is related because they're linking to it a lot, but I see PHP 5 advertised everywhere. And I have to say, I'm sorry, this is five years outdated i think yeah, the it's a end little of bit. life of php 5 is 2016 or 2015. a little so, bit outdated and it's a security risk to actually host your stuff on the website like that so i would you know i would just do a search on the whole website you know for php 5 something like like with a site command and and fix all of these occurrences because you you, you hopefully don't really use php 5 for your services and Wow. Oh, happens a lot. PHP 5. Yeah. All of these occurrences I would fix in the content. And yeah, the la latest PHP version is 7.4. Yeah. Right. And I actually, I, I like, I, I remember that one of my many websites that I have for tests or whatever, <laughs> I got a warning a, a, few a few months. Yeah, test. I, I got a warning a few months ago from my hosting provider saying that I hadn't migrated to the latest PHP version. And it was already in five something, right? Mm -hmm. And yes, mm -hmm. they are pushing people to move uh, to yeah. migrate those sites. No, you have to. It's, it's you, you cannot leave these old versions open. And uh, lifting facial, I'm sorry. Here are even links from lifting facial from some oh. plastic surgery website. Or do they oh, oh, you're yeah. looking to the wrong one, maybe previous one? No. Or they're connected to each other? No, no. <laughs> lifting facial. This website oh, here okay. is built by Creare Site Web. Ah, ah because they're a they okay. design then, then agency. What I think it's quite confusing. I mean, like you might want to get a kind of a mention on their website, but you should remember that getting links from not relevant websites might harm you if you do have only a few links. Yeah. That, that that's like you know, it's great to have this like you know link as a kind of. Yeah. I mean, like whole case, but. Uh, that might be also risky because if you have like 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 this website only a few links then it might be not good at all because it might be considered as a spam yeah. strategy there, there's also another very important aspect here that has to do with uh, internal linking and technical optimization of the website i i crawled the website and i was going through those urls that um seems to be canonicalized yeah to all this mm. and i am finding quite a few of HTTP URLs that are being canonicalized to their HTTPS version. But why in the first place I am seeing them? And it's, it's, if you go to any HTTP URL, they are not redirecting them towards their HTTPS. And of course, you don't want to internally link to any HTTP. So it seems that they have an HTTPS version, but they haven't actually properly migrated towards it, that the, the HTTP URLs are just canonicalizing towards them, but not actually redirected. Mm. And there are mm. still a few internal links going to the HTTP version, not the HTTPS. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. it's probably somewhere you know 
2016 before they, you know, when they last updated this from from how it seems like, and maybe they were in the middle of a migration or something. And and this is a trust issue, not just for Google, but also for me mm-hmm. as a as a potential buyer. So polit- the, the cookie policies and all these things are here. But, you know, when I see 2016, my question is, is this GDPR ready? Are they aware of data privacy laws? of 2018 all these changes when they build a website for me as a normal buyer and when i look at some of these uh blog posts that we found oh sorry now i messed up the navigation because i don't speak from oh my god i i am just having a little bit of a heart attack here one of the things that i love to to do by the way uh is when looking for opportunities how to to improve speed because i just enter (laughs) to the to the home page and i'm seeing that yeah, that the largest content full pane is 7.1 second, right? So I went and, and t- uh-huh. took a look at like they have they have some images here, four four point five mega <laughs> wow. <images>. And <laughs> wow. images and then nine hundred kilobytes, six hundred kilobytes. So they do have a, a problem here regarding yeah. the, the sizing of the images that they are using, potentially compressing them too. Uh, because yes, they they are negatively affecting their their site speed too. Definitely. Mm-hmm. The, 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 the just, they're using uh, high resolution images to show how they're professional. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> as, well, as a web designers. Yeah. Uh, okay. So there's quite some work left to do, but I I get the feeling that they might be able to work together with the other uh, with a facial. Um, um, <laughs> Uh, Seattle facial, you know, an HSP and, and someone who needs it. Exchanging links and saying like, okay, yeah. guys, give us please these links. Ex- exchange of service. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. I don't know. Have, exactly. you ever, have you ever had those type of offerings? I offer you a plastic surgery and you do SEO in exchange. Uh, I, I haven't, no. unfortunately. Uh, you have? Uh, no, I haven't. Uh, you haven't. You haven't. No, I haven't, unfortunately. Am I good or bad? Maybe you give Dr. William a call with a link to this video how we rip his site apart and how his website could actually get a lift uh and i think uh there is a lot of opportunity you know if you have to write i, I know that right craig team. campbell used to work with some uh companies that are selling fashion uh clothes so he was exchanging his knowledge for fashion clothes oh okay well he's a young boy he's, he's not even 40 i think so he's still into fashion. Uh, that wouldn't be for me, you know. But then, you know, what am I? No, no, because take a look. I mean, in my case, fashion is also not for me. I'm like yeah. being always like, especially now in lockdown, I'm only in sweatpants nowadays. But, oh, you know, yeah. Christoph, you, it may be something that is orange, only orange, please. Now, I have orange sweatpants already, and I plan to order some more today, you know, just in case I need to get up. I, I'm all orange. My biggest issue is if I would ever go back on stage i would want to wear those orange sweatpants still because they're so comfortable <laughs> so in the, I don't know. In the, before and after before yeah. and after oh yeah before and after exactly before and after, Wait, right. we, we still have a question here from from andy that okay. i see uh if you have a page with 200 no follow links due to ugc such as from comments what happens to the page rank becomes an issue um paginating comments isn't a good experience and discuss might be crawled now yeah that's okay if those comments are are making sense i mean like they're yeah. meaningful um they are not spammy well i mean like it, 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 i think like you know it's it, it's 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 a very related strategy actually to just you know to leave comments to grow your i don't know brand authority as a digital pr strategy why not like yeah. i know a lot of uh, like you know marketers that are really leveraging the strategy to build their brand they're like you know they on purpose selecting those posts that they know that will end up with getting a decent traffic as well as um a good number of comments and they're trying to leave their comments in the per like you know the to be the very first one who is going to leave this comment and by this just you know being um like you know just after like being the very first comment that you see as a user if they're like doing it in the right timing yeah so well that's a very good strategy and 
that's I think everything depends on the context of what kind of comments you're getting. And yeah. so, yeah, but I don't see an issue. Yeah, no, me neither. I mean, the 200 no follow links due to UGC in the comments, I'm not sure if I would enable the, the links that go with block comments in the template. If this really is an issue for you, then just get rid of the website. You know, the time. Yeah, are just over disable people... and that's very much it. Well, yeah. this, this is the thing, right? I think yeah. that indeed, like, um, especially to give certain signals of authority and, and being a yeah. real a, a real business, a real brand. Um, yeah. Comments might be quite good, but it's important yeah. that these are real comments, quality yeah, comments yeah. that yeah. are relevant yeah. and that are actually uh, whether endorsing or analyzing the products yeah. that you're offering, real reviews. Uh, exactly. We see a lot of players, especially in the e-commerce sector, leveraging comments to, to, to actually integrate content that is fresh, that is, yeah. is unique, that is not yeah. the typical product description yeah. that is can be seen everywhere so it's yeah. good to leverage and, and, and it's a like completely still relevant way to to add relevant fresh content to your, to your website but what i will say that is much more important here is to make sure that these are really good comments in in yeah. the first place right yeah by the yeah. way you could use also comments to build links in the way of connecting with people so what you could do you could on purpose find those posts that are quite quite popular and already those posts have gained a decent number of comments, join this conversation and then reach out to to the rest of uh, other people that were also part of this conversation. Because when you are reaching out like, you know, to a person that you don't know, you don't have a really alleged reason to write. But if you say like, we, 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 we are boss, we're like, you know, leaving a comment there, then it's, it works like an icebreaker and you just pass a trust check. Yeah. So that's how you could secure also links and guarantee that your emails won't go straight to spam and will be opened. Yeah, these guys are doing a lot of things right. Uh, just when you... Uh, explain the comments i found this link here going <laughs> to a search box uh for the local reviews for his local mm. uh, google my business entry which doesn't come up now anymore but he has 50 reviews on that one so mm -hmm. uh, maybe these are some of them i wouldn't trust because they are from people without a profile picture and some mm. JB, but um, I think it's okay for the algorithms. But I would be careful with that kind of stuff because uh, once you kick off some fires on, on, on Google reviews, mm -hmm. you don't want your competitors to spend time here, right? Imagine, yeah, Julian Wilson working for a competitor and Jay Lee Gradin working for a competitor. That, that that could be a problem, you know, with all these one-star ratings. Um, but in general, I think uh, this guy, this Dr. William Portuis, is answering questions already on this real self. And here's a link to his profile. And this is where he's using that strategy that you just described. Yeah. In, in that forum and getting, getting real people, real eyeballs to his service, to his name, to his website. And I think everything that is being done in here on this uh on this um forum i would say uh can be can be reused or or repurposed as content you know maybe Definitely. some of the people here uh you know when he answers a question you could take that into uh, uh that blurb that he answered and and actually make an article give this to to to, to some um medical writer to, to create an article about it you know not an article with seventeen thousand words but uh maybe also just 500 but to answer specific questions there is someone with a specific question on this website and he's contributing to that website's success and i think taking this mr portuis to your own website would be very 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 worth your while yeah definitely you could even like you know like extend this strategy and uh, reach out to some people on purpose uh, yeah. or even join some communities and create, repurpose their content, even like not just, you know, answering or not answering, but using 
uh, this content user generated as a source of inspiration as well. Yeah. So that might be like, you know, when people are asking, what should I write about? Just go to uh, some local communities you have like, you know, on Reddit or even like you have some Facebook closed groups and see what people are asking there, what kind of topics um, they're just, you know, discussing and that will be your next content basically. Yeah. And this is how it works. It's free. I received this complimentary treatment at the real self house. So this mm. is why we see their picture and um, mm -hmm. yeah, it's for free. Ah, okay, it's so, for free. Okay, but at least that's disclosed. And uh, I guess um, if people go with that and agree to it, uh, disclosing it is also fine. It's perfectly a uh, fine strategy for me. Nothing fishy about that one. So lots Nothing. of boxes checked here. Age. Botox at age of 31. Hmm. Okay, but that's another. Let's not discuss the ethics part of plastic surgery. Um, and ladies, it's been 90 minutes now. I think we need to wrap it up. Mm -hmm. I would love to go on and on and on, but um, I'm actually getting a little bit exhausted from these discussions. So, <laughs> um, I would love to. No, no plastic surgery. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. I'm not sure. How did we get back? You see, this is the thing. <laughs> You see that my focus, I'm, 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 I lost my focus. We were actually talking about the R Romanian um, uh, web design, uh, yeah, web design, yeah. web design thing, and then went back to plastic surgery. So I think it's time to call it a day. <laughs> and yeah, I want to thank you, Alex and Aleda, a thousand times. Thank you very much for being here today. And no, thank you for thank, thank you for the opportunity. Yeah. It has been so much fun. I have uh, really, really enjoyed it. Oh, yeah, so thank did you I. For to join. So did I, and uh, I would be happy to welcome you back in one of the future shows. Uh, this is definitely a format that I love, and our people, you know, the, the viewers love it as well. Um, we'll, we'll, we, 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 just in the middle of the show, we received more submissions for more websites that will, you know, go into the cycle of getting crawled, and we'll look at them uh, maybe next week already. Uh, the English session is every Thursday at 3 p.m. London, 10 a.m. New York, 7 a.m. California. I know it's early. Sorry. Still. <laughs> All right. Thank you. But very we much, didn't Alex. care. We are in Thank Europe. you. Thank you for everything, Christoph. Uh, Alex, you. such a Thank pleasure to share the virtual stage with you. Have a great day. You too. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye. Thank you.